In this group of videos, I say group because I don't know how many, but what I want to do is to demonstrate how to combine the 500 emulate free software into a program where you also have a controller that you're using, an actual hardware controller. So this is actually applicable for those of you that don't have a controller, but you want to use the emulator to do all the lab projects in our manuals, to watch the videos and go through the whole course without actually owning a controller, which means that you can use MicroStarter Lite, which is free, RS Lynx Lite, which is free, and 500 Emulate, which is free. Now, if you're also working in a classroom or on hardware somewhere, uh, the emulator only supports MicroLogix 1000 and 1100. And because it's not a real controller, it really doesn't matter or not whether it's obsolete or whether you have one. So you can, on your hardware, your actual controller, have a hardware controller that is not a 1000 or 1100. And the case that I'm thinking of is a class that I'm working with that is using 1400s and the students want to put those three software packages on their, their own laptop or tower at home, save the projects in class that they're doing on a 1400, save them and then go home, change the properties to an 1100, work on the programs, save them onto a memory stick and go back to class at a later day Go in, open it up, and change it back to a 1400 and go back and forth. So you can do all the lab projects in our manuals with the emulator uh, because none of our projects really use instructions that are not supported by the 1100. Now the 1400, which is what we typically use in our classroom, is the, we'll say the... Um, Maserati of the MicroLogix. It has the most features or the Tesla if you like. So th that's what we're going to do in the, this series of videos. So the first one I'm going to demonstrate going back and forth. You create the project at school or on a hardware or an emulator. Either way I'll go back and forth a couple times so you can get in the flow. Keep in mind that the emulator has its challenges because it is grabbing a chunk of the RAM in your computer and making it behave like a controller's RAM, which means there's no I.O. All the memory locations are there, you know, file zero and one, outputs and inputs, they're there, but they're not connected to anything, and they behave as they would in a real controller, which means that you don't have a digital field device simulator that you can hit buttons and flip switches. You have to use your mouse and you have to toggle bits on and off, but you can do it. It is, once you get comfortable with it, you'll fly. Let's jump in here and do this. A quick note, if you're looking for a down and dirty two minute solution to this issue, this, this is not going to be a good video for you. I'm not trying to put you off. I'm just saying that I can't skip a lot of details that are important to the beginning, the learner, the one who's struggling, who's maybe paying for this out of their own pocket to go to school. So this, th these are gonna be lengthy and full of detail. So there's no five minute solution here, not even a 10 minute solution. Thank you for your patience. The first order of business, of course, is that you have to find the software to download free. And if you search around, you know, and Google it, you'll find links to download MicroStarter Lite, RS Lynx Lite, and 500 Emulate or Emulate 500, RS 500 Emulate, whatever they're naming it. So you have to have those three pieces of software. You have to download them and you have to install them on your computer. And I can't do that for you. I can't even really show you how to do that because it looks different on everybody's computer, mainly because of operating systems and your preferences. So let's assume that you've got them all downloaded and loaded onto your computer. So you've got to start there. The first order of business is RS Lynx. And I've got that up here on the screen. And I'm going to go to the double headed snake, click on it. And you can see I have some drivers running. I'm going to add a new one. Notice that's grayed out. You drop down the list 
and you go down to Slick 500 DH45 Emulate Driver. Add new. Don't be clever and change the name. Just leave it so you can find it easy. And it's going to give a station number. I never change that. I just leave it station zero. So the emulator is station zero. I'm going to close this. Now I'm going to go to RS Who, and there is my emulator. And it finds that there was a Micrologix 1100. That's simply because in the past, I have used the emulator with an 1100. Remember that the emulator only works with 1000 and 1100. Our goal here is to go back and forth between a project that's 1100 and a project that's 1400. Okay, so we established the driver and we see that it is browsing. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a project. I'm using RS Logics Micro because that's what I have. You're probably using a Micro Starter Lite, which is going to look just like this, or you're using RS Logics 500. The only pinch point here is you have to select an 1100 if you're starting out from scratch. File, New, I'm going to pick an 1100. I'm going to pick a Series B. I have no idea what the difference is. Notice something very important here that you have to select a driver. In this case, you have to. You won't really have another opportunity in another place. So I'm going to pick the Emulate 500-1 driver and OK. And now I have a project. And notice right here, Driver Emulate, emulate 500. Now what I'm going to do is open up the emulator. So I'll just shift this over. It's right here somewhere. There it is, RSLogix Emulate 5. Now it came up with this because I had selected it before. But if I hadn't, I would open this up. And I would scroll down to where I saved that project that I had created. This is the project that I created untitled and just save as emulate test. Okay, I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back here. Now I'm going to open the file. I'm going to go to desktop, scroll down, emulate test, open. And I'm going to go back to, we'll just call it MicroStarter, RSLogix 500, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to do a comms. Actually, I don't even have to do that because my driver is specified as the emulator driver. I'm just going to click on download and there it is. I just downloaded that project to the emulator. I can put it in the run mode. And of course, we don't have any code and the emulator does not support online editing. That's no surprise considering the complexity of what they're trying to do with the emulator. So there you have the first step and that was you found the software, the links, you downloaded it, then you installed it on your computer, you did your RS links thing with the driver, the EMU 500. If you had more than one, it would be dash two, dash three, just like the DF1, dash one, etc. So you configured that driver, you created a project in whatever your software is at home or on your lower license, whether it be MicroStarter Lite or MicroStarter as opposed to RS Logix 500 in the classroom uh, where you've got all the equipment and stuff. And then you downloaded it at the driver EMU 500-1. And there you are. You're downloading and you're running. So at this point, we're going to back out and we're going to convert it to a 1400 and then download it into a 1400, a real 1400. So let's do that. Just for grins, I'm going to leave this running and I'm going to save it. Desktop emulate test. And I think I'll make it 1100 to the name. We know it's 1100. Okay, now I'm going to open up another instance of RS Logics 500 or Micro starter, micro starter light, and pretend like now I'm at another location, okay? And I'm going to pretend like I carry the program on a memory stick to the new location. So 
So file, open, go up to the desktop, and I'm looking for top, emulate test 1100, right there. Open it, read only file, would you like to work with a copy? Okay, and there's that program. If we go look at controller properties, we see that it's 1100 series B. But I'm going to drop down the list and go up to the 1400, apply. It tells me what it's going to change. It may result in some changes in loss of data, whatever. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to go to my channel configuration to make sure that's lined up. I'll make that 38.4 because that's what I know my 1400 is. And remember, we created this offline well, at another computer and we never changed any of this, so it's still in the default configuration of 19.2 and boot P. So turn that off. Okay. okay. Now I'm going to go to com system. I don't want to use the emulation driver. You can see this is still running back here. See back here? Instead, I'm going to go to Ethernet IP and I don't know which one of these. I think it's 221. Yep, right there. So 221, download. I'm going through all the standard stuff. Do you want to select? Okay, cannot write to this file. That's because I changed it. So do you want to select a new file? Okay, we'll just, for grins, make this 1400. I've never done this exactly like this before. And there I am, folks, in the run mode, just so you know I'm not cheating. See, 1400 Series B. And if I were to turn off my controller, this would go away. So I'm online with the controller. So, okay, so I make a bunch of changes and I save it, okay? And I close it down and I then transport it back to this other computer. And we will, I'll go offline with this. And now I'm going to file, open, Go to desktop, there, emulate test 1400. That's going to close the other one, but that's fine. Go to controller properties, see it's a 1400. Change it to an 1100. Okay, just to hedge my bets and avoid possible issues, I'm going to go save as, and I'm going to change this back to 1100. So it matches, okay, save it. Art exists, replace, yes. So I just overwrote what I left at home with what I left the classroom with or the other location. Now comms, now see the driver is now pointing to ABDF1, okay, because that's where it was last used. So if I go into controller properties, communications and pick the emulator, and there may be other ways to do this. I'm just experimenting here. System comms, and there I am online with the 1100, but in the emulator, not an actual hardware 1100. Now, the one thing I didn't do when I was in the 1400 was make some changes. And then when I went back to here, you would see, oh yeah, they weren't there when we left the 1100 in the emulator and went to the other location to the 1400. So there you go. That's step one of establishing that you can go back and forth between a 1400 and 1100 as long as you are dotting your i's and crossing your t's and not skipping any of these steps you may even figure out some ways on your own to expedite this now we're going to do something else that is going to make it easier for you to use the emulator with a different format so that's the end of this video thank you for watching and being patient i'll see you in the next one